Welcome guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ayoko Fushala. I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope you guys are doing good and I hope you guys are not stressed or worrying about anything. Um, yeah, it is Wednesday. It is our Bible study today and I'm really excited to be here. And um, God has been doing so much on this channel. And I noticed that I usually don't come like full screen on my Bible study sessions. I decided to start with like a full screen so that you can like kind of see um, a visual of me before then we get into like the scriptures. Then I should where I actually share my screen. But um, yeah, I just wanted to have a little bit of conversation with you guys um, about, I don't know, anything in anything pretty much um for me personally um I I've been kind of been wanting to actually learn about like how to like film and to like create like you know content more content you know very intentional content right and if you check my page you'll see that um this page is actually for bible study for it's a ministry but also it's about lifestyle as well so I just want to alarm you guys that, um, you know, I will be posting like, it is faith, fitness, and lifestyle. That is what it says on the channel right here. I will honor what the channel is really about. It is about faith and that's what we've been doing for a very long time. Um, I do have my own personal fitness business page on YouTube and I still do, um, you know, my business on the side. I have been doing my blogs, my business blogs, which is very specific to the senior population and people from like, I've been really focusing on like people from um, 65 and older or like even early age, you know, maybe like 50 to like, you know, 100 plus. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been writing blogs. Um, and so I just feel like God is really doing a lot and is really taking my is going to, it's taking my business to another level and it's really seen the hard work that I've been putting in my business. And um, yeah, I've just been creating blogs and um, I appreciate everyone that actually goes on my website, Vigorous Fitness Shop. It says V-I-G-O-R-U-S-F-I-T-N-E-S-S-S-H-O-P.com um, that I've been going there and watching my blogs and I really appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, I did not post any blog today. Uh, well, this week because of, I've just um, been very busy, but uh, or any video at all on YouTube, which we're going to be focusing more on very soon. But guys, that is really what's up. <laughs> and just to let you know that I will be posting like a lifestyle, um, content here. I want to just kind of, you know, drop something, um, this month because I know like next month there's going to be like some changes and so I feel like I will be in a better place to actually like be posting lifestyle content but like honestly I feel like it doesn't really matter what's going on in my life like I feel like we've been going through this like all transition the changes has been coming and like we've been going through it together but it's like even though we don't really see each other right and so I feel like very open to like actually share like there's never been a case where like I would post any um content and my subscribers will actually like say something that is super mean. I really I think that I have very, very sweet subscribers and I really just I'm so thankful to each and every one of you guys. Um I know like there are some people that actually do post like really weird uh, comments down below. And I I pray for them. <laughs> I pray for them that they will also like find their own passion and they wouldn't, you know, experience um the backlash of them doing what they're doing. So yeah, that is a bit of that. I actually do have a content for lifestyle that I will be putting together, learning a bit about cinematography, um, a little bit to kind of implement in my um content um making as well. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be starting with like uh, a Mac G7 set uh, to um camera and my cell phone that's like an iphone 11 i don't plan to change it at all maybe in the future we'll see but that's what's going on okay that's really what's going on i feel like you need to know that's that was going on because like we're friends at this point all right so the last time i came up here we spoke i spoke a lot about a lot of things but like i wouldn't call those um those the content i wouldn't say that they were actually bible study even though they were sort of like bible study i guess like i would just like to brand them as teachings right 
because they did have very specific titles and which is like my, my Bible study actually um actually does have like titles anyways so I mean our original um curriculum is focused on Uzziah and like we're going to Uzziah chapter 8 today last time we did Uzziah chapter 7 and I'm really excited right I'm really excited about like was that chapter eight? Because like I'm reading it and I'm like, wow, like this is really amazing. Like God is really truly amazing. And there's a lot of things like I've, I've been telling you, like I've been reading Genesis and like the Holy Spirit has really been imprinting like a lot of things in my mind. I'm like, I I want to do like a separate video or on Genesis, but it's like we can't be going up and down. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like I want to. I really like. There's just things that the Holy Spirit has been revealing to me that I feel like I have to share. I just have to share. I just have to share because he explains a lot of things that Jesus Christ is doing when you watch other people's testimonies and you see the relevance and just debunking a lot of things, a lot of beliefs that we've had, we've believed or a lot of beliefs that we have uh, pertaining to certain characters in the Bible, many people that have actually painted as black, when essentially like we misunderstood them, and that is absolutely wrong, because like when we're reading the Word of the Lord, we need to read it with the help of the Holy Spirit, right? Read it with like desire and the yearning to learn about God, right? It should be about God. What is God doing? It. What is God saying? It. What is God? It should be the center. It should be about God. If it's not about God, if it's more, like if you puts in your entire focus on the character, you're not really going to get what you're supposed to be getting from the um, chapter, from the from the um, verse, right? You really need to focus on like, what is God doing? Even if you you read the Bible and you don't see like God, even in like, for example, Second Corinthians, First Corinthians, like it's like just Paul talking, but you will still see God there. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so... Uh, I want to pray before we actually get into like summary for Isaiah chapter seven. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your grace, for bringing us here again today. How about be thou exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you for your marvelous work. Thank you, Father, for your your for purging us, for cleansing us, for strengthening us, for making us your righteousness, O God. Abba, Father, I give you all the glory, O Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. But I glorify your name for you are holy and we are your righteousness, O God. You are holy and we are your righteousness, O God. And we come here today, O God, to glean from your word that we might be, we might continue to be your righteousness, O God. Strengthen ourselves, O God, and empower ourselves in the word of the Lord, in Jesus' name. Abba, as I teach today, O God, I allow you to teach through me. I surrender myself unto you, all my understanding, my everything, oh God, I surrender it unto you, oh God, for I, oh Lord, have your way in Jesus' name. And I block every distraction from my end and from the audience's end in Jesus' mighty name. Abba, be thou exalted, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to begin. Uh, I feel like I was, I was praying. I just like, yeah, like, um, so I went out tonight and like, um, I just wanted to share that, you know, just what the devil is really doing, um. For anybody, anyone that's actually like quit an habit, just like be careful, especially in this time, like the enemy is really like trying to bring people back. And it's like, it's really like, there's nothing new. That's what the devil does. Just kind of like, an, uh, a, c'est ton avis, okay? Like it's a warning, okay? All right, so yeah, yep. be prayerful and uh, read the word, right? Okay, so we're going to begin. I am going to be sharing this, um, the screen. Okay. J'espère que tu vas, tu vas tellement bien avec vous. Okay, I'm speaking a bit of French here. <laughs> Let's spice things up a little. Um, okay, so in Osea chapter 7, we did talk about, you know, really what's happening between the nations and we talked about you know i mentioned the keywords that we talked about was like the um the door baker we talked about marriage husband and wife like the bible study from like last week was like very interesting because we just talked about the importance of like people around you and the like the importance of like the support um, in your life people that are supposed to be in your life like destiny helpers and like really the role of god in your life to actually help you to rise right and we talked about the power of the word 
and we see how the king is basically an example of you know the consequence of the misuse of words um and so yeah that that's pretty much uh, not all but like we also talked about the um you know the disobedience but also we see also like the self the 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 extreme self-reliance or of Ephraim, you know, or of Ephraim wasn't about, you know, you know, um it's pun is punishment, right? You know, when you're too self-reliant, like you tend to miss out on the blessings of the Lord because like God really wants us to rely on him, right? So we need to pay attention to like when we are feeling like a sleep we've got everything under control. And um, we should rely on God even more. All right, guys. So that is that i don't want to i feel like we already talked about it and if you've not watched the bible study from um last week i highly suggest that you do and you know it's gonna bless your life also like what what do you guys think about the story of um the samson um teaching nobody actually like liked or comment i really would like to like actually have a conversation with one of you guys and just like rub minds like what do you actually think like what did you believe if actually watching the teaching um what did the holy spirit actually tell you you know you know i am all for debates okay and especially when it comes to the word like i want to let's talk about let's you know converse and like you know clarify certain things right um, okay, so Ozai chapter 8, I'm going to read and I say again, participate by reading alongside me. KJV version. Set the trumpet of um to thy mouth. Guys, I'm sorry. Um just give me one second here. Set the trumpet to thy mouth, he shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed against um they have transgressed my covenant and uh trespassed against my law right um israel shall cry unto me my lord we know thee israel hath cast off the thing that is good the enemy shall pursue him let's just kind of take a pause here and just kind of analyze exactly what's going like we kind of i've given you a bit of summary of like what happened in um Isaiah chapter 7 and God is really talking about Israel here. Like when it says, set the trumpet in your mouth, right? I remember like, this is like Uzziah basically talking, you know, uh, he's talking to the children here, the disobedient children of God, like um, in, in, in the place of God, basically saying, set up the, um, set the trumpet to thy mouth. He shall come as an eagle right um set up the trumpet to your mouth it's not like who is who is setting a trumpet to his mouth it's like well god could it could be telling you know uzziah right you know set the trumpet to your mouth right because it's god speaking here he says my god we israel is going to say my god we know thee right so just think about it i feel like maybe just like let's think about this for a second set the trumpet to thy mouth right setting the trumpet to thy mouth what does a trumpet do a trumpet actually alarms people right and remember like um Uzziah is basically speaking on behalf of god so he's in the place of a of a prophet per se right so he's supposed to alarm the people that he who is coming somebody that's gonna bring judgment upon them is coming as an eagle against the house of the lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law okay i feel like there are a lot of things that are symbolic you know in even in today's world like in the match with nigeria versus south africa i saw one one of my friends status that um they had um released an eagle um to fly in the stadium and i'm like and i'm reading i'm like wow that is very symbolic about what god is actually you know doing um in the world today and in a way that is you know as ignorant as that might have seemed like they were doing it for like status purposes but like you could tell that that was very symbolic that was someone that understood the word word under, understands what god is actually saying like the judgment of the Lord is coming. Like Jesus Christ is coming, right? Um, it says, it shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and trespassed against my law. 
right? And it says, and who, who is coming? We can see Jesus Christ is the one that's going to come as an eagle, right? Blow the trump trumpet. And you see this happening even in um, uh, Revelations about the trumpet being blown. And even Paul talks about it, the trumpet is going to be, uh, be blown. And then the children of God that are, you know, uh, that have remained uh, faithful to the Lord will transform, right? And that is when death will be, you know, conquered, right? And it says, Israel shall cry unto me at that time when like, you know, and this, this um, prophecy right now is very, very like far into the future. Like Uzziah was actually prophesying God's will far into the future, like so far into the future. Right. And it says like, Israel shall cry unto me. Why? They will say, my God, we know thee. Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. Right. This is like, when Jesus comes the second time, right? This is what's going to happen to them, right? And it says, and, and you know, it says, verse four, they have set up kings, but not by me, right? They have made princes and I knew it not of their silver and their gold. Have they made them idols that they may be cut off, right? So, this might not be evident to us right now. Like, we don't know what people are doing in their houses. <laughs> um, and we know even in like the times of the, the, in the book of Judges, we see that Israel, the people of Israel, the Israelites were left to basically doing whatever they wanted. They were very uneducated about the commandment of the Lord. They didn't really even know God. And so they were, they, they were, I, you know, idolatrous, right? They worshiped, molten images and even now like we don't really know like what's going on especially with the war and if you know anything about war anything about famine anything about you know poverty right if you know anything about that you understand that that, that condition drives the human to be very desperate right like humans would do whatever it takes to actually survive like and so and i've i've lived around that type of environment before i'm telling you i live around jane and finch like i saw things that i've never seen i've never seen before people would like practicing idolatry um and it's the consequences we can say it's the consequences of the environment um you know they didn't really know god they didn't really like learn about him um, even if they they knew that there was god they thought it was the universe and they were mad at him for many different reasons they thought that God was wicked, you know, like they had, you know, a certain belief about God because of their condition. And so Israel at this point is like, they're, they're at war. And so it's the same thing. Humans are humans, the same condition. They're trying to survive. And um, even he talks about in, um, I think it was the book of Ezekiel about how, you know, or it might be the first Kings, like Ezekiel. I'm not really sure about how the woman based the basically is, um, basically killed her child so that they can eat because of um there was a siege in the city right that is an example like people what people do people will do anything just to survive at this point so at this point like it, it is pretty clear like the war happened in israel and in gaza like there's there are for sure treacherous things happening against the almighty father um and even amongst the people that are non-Jew, right? And it says they have set up, I mean, it says they have cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him. And we see here, it says like they've, they've cast off the things that, that the thing that is good, like even in the history of the Jewish people, we see that, you know, they did not really accept Jesus Christ to be, to be their personal Lord and Savior. In fact, in fact, they actually rejected him, right? So I feel like, you know, this, just signifies that you know sometimes like as a child of god when you're going through rejection it does hurt like it hurts 100 percent. but again you have to understand that christ lives inside of you just the way they rejected jesus christ is the way that you know they would tend to reject you you know and it's just what it is and you just need to grow that thick skin okay <laughs> and pray to god right if you feel some type of way about it and it says, Israel has cast off the thing that is good. The enemy shall pursue him, 
at this point you cast away the person that was supposed to be your messiah and so because you don't have any shielding you, the enemy will pursue you and he said they have set up kings not but not by me they have made princes and i knew it not of their silver and their gold have they made them idols that they may be cut off right they actually use their own hands to bring about their own destruction because they wanted they thought that they could be just self-reliance controlling you know their gods which was what god actually god actually said that he said that you know you, you can't control me if you think that you're going to build you know altars to your gods and control it control what it's going to eat you know and all of these things you know what i mean like you cannot control the almighty father right god had made it clear to them um, and they, need, they needed to obey him. Like he is the God. They are not, you know, the, it's not the other way around, you know? Um, he said, you know, like they, 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 they're doing what they want to do, right? They, they're very self-reliant, you know, very independent. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure if you look around, you will see certain people or certain, you know, wealthy people or like in like capitalists or entrepreneurs, right? That, are, that think that, well, if I put up an altar, do all these things, like money is going to come in and we see that happening in many different cultures all over the world. People are actually going out of their way to actually, um, you know, um, to actually adopt the culture of other people, like the really, false religion of other people, other cultures, right? Because of material gain, because of survival. And it says, thy calf or Samaria as cast thee off right all those things that you're doing is just going to make you be cut off right you're like you want something so bad and you're thinking that if you actually do it a certain way that it's going to actually bring about that which you want but in fact it's actually the other way around that the more you're actually driving towards that thing that you think you know will help you right the more the farther it is your goal right and it's so crazy like it's really crazy um, but again, we see even in the world today, people that are actually practicing many treacherous things, um, doing all sort of wicked, wicked things, sacrificing children to bow, even in today's, you know, world in today's time, um, they are actually prospering and, but then it's not really like, it's not really about the physical, is it? Because life is spiritual, Right. You might, you might see them and you might think that, wow, like this person actually is very wealthy, is very rich, but then you know the person to be an evil person. But essentially, like that's not what is, that's not the measure of, you know, a man's prosperity. It's not by, it's, it's material things. Um, prosperity is not measured by those things. Like well-being is not measured by those things. Salvation is not measured by those things, right? And if you're here and you're thinking like, well, if you have all of the riches in this world, why do you need to be saved? Well, the point is that maybe you don't really understand that everything that man has built that is so beautiful right now, the beautiful building in Italy, in Rome, right, in Poland, in, in Norway, in Africa, the beautiful animals, everything will be destroyed and point blank right like that is the fact right when the trumpet sounds that's what he says this is when the trumpet sounds right those ones that are that have transgressed against his covenant and has trespassed against his word his law sorry you know will suffer the consequences of the action and that is just what it is right so you know you might they might be or you might be enjoying you know all of these things at the expense of other people's lives just know that the day of judgment will come, right? The day of judgment will come. All right. Um, so, and also just a reminder that nobody ever does something and goes cut free. Like you will be judged, whether you like it or not, like you will be judged. And even when you've received Christ, like even the saints will be judged, you know? And we've talked about the order of things, right? like the order that we are, like, I believe that was like the previous two Bible studies. Um, and we talked about, you know, when you actually sin and you, you're thinking like you go to God to ask forgiveness 
that it will forgive you and it just it's just gonna go back is like normal but then it's like there are consequences to action to your action it's just basic principle like yes somebody took the l for you right like jesus christ actually like god wants to like you know strike you down or something you know and jesus christ's blood speaks for you that hey like this person is really is is, is innocent a queen said but then it's like even still even still you know hey there is still an order to things right it's the, a relationship do you know what i mean it's a relationship and so and that's why it's a relation it's so important that you have a relationship with jesus christ because ultimately is the lord and is the god is the one that is saying is literally the self is the one that is saving your life. Do you understand? It's do you know what it means? Do you know what it means to have a relationship? I feel like people need to understand that. Like it's not, it's it's a relationship. Like the Bible is not something that is um, it's not something that is constant, it's very dynamic, it's very malleable. Do you understand what I mean? It's very malleable, just like the way we're talking about something different in Ozar chapter, I believe it was seven. Now we're talking about something very far into the future that hasn't even, you know, transpired yet. You see how malleable it is and how like intertwined everything is and how like, you know, really it's about having that relationship with Jesus Christ. Like it's really about that point blank period, <laughs> you know? And I feel like I have a lot of things I wanted to, I want to share in terms of like, you know, what the Holy Spirit has actually even shared to me in terms of like the politics and in, in, in the kingdom of God, I feel like a lot of people don't really know, but I feel like slowly and slowly, you know, the Holy Spirit will begin to share to the church so that many people would know, you know, really like when you give your life to Christ, you are supposed to grow in him, you know, like it's not supposed to be like, okay, I give my life to Christ, but then it's like, I'm not growing in the kingdom of God. You are supposed to grow. Have you ever been in any organization where like, you're just in there, right? And then you're not actually just there for like 20 years. You've not, you're not learning anything and you're just the same, right? Like you will be bored. You will just be uninspired or motivated. You will be like you, you can even start to become a parasite in that organization. And guess what? Like Jesus Christ does not want you to be in that position. Like he wants you to actually progress in your knowledge of him, in the knowledge of, of the word of the Lord. Look at the word again. If you have to read one scripture, read it again and again and again and again and again, right? And go through life experiences, reading it again and again and again, and let the word speak to you in from really let the word speak to you let the word speak to you let the word speak to you okay <laughs> all right cool um so yeah um so this is what they've done like they are basically like decided making decisions by themselves right if you're that person that literally just makes decision by yourself and you don't really consult god um that is no good like i'm telling you like even if you don't hear from god or you you think that you don't like like hear from him like he actually does speak and like your job is to literally ask him god i want to do this what do you have to say about it you've played your part right like that is literally all that you have to do like it is a relationship god is god alpha and omega you know the almighty god hears you okay so it would never be a case where like, if you then carried out that tax, right? Maybe you were just like, I don't know, like <laughs> maybe it's God is talking. You know, there's some people that God actually speaks to them, but like, they don't actually like pay very close attention, but then it's God is God. You will, you will hear him. Like I don't, I've never heard someone that's really wanting, like you have a relationship with God and you, 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 you literally like, you don't, you don't hear him like it seems very strange to me right but then it's like you 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 hear him like you just need to pay very close attention you do or maybe like you just just you know very focused on what you're doing focused on the, that decision that you've chosen even though you've actually verbally said that god what do you have to say regarding this god will speak he will speak through people he will speak through signs he will do many things and so you know like at the end of the day if you for example if you which is like odd that you ask and then, well, if it's, if it was the case that you actually picked something that he actually doesn't want you to pick, right? Then it just wouldn't work out, right? It just wouldn't work out. But then it's like, at the end of the day, right? You ask, and that is really what is important that you actually honored God. 
And sometimes, like, I, I know, sometimes when you are, um, you ask God for something, but he's not really, like, telling you precise inform um, yes or no about certain things. It, it, it happens. I'm not even going to say it doesn't happen. Like, God might just be quiet about certain things, right? And, okay, like, and then you go ahead and do what you think would be right. Um, but it ends up being that it didn't work out and you're like, God, isn't you that told me to do this? Um, I feel like certain experiences, God just wants us to go through them. Um, and so just like take life, you know, as it is and like know that just do your part, do your role, um, play your role. That's how you say it, play your role. And um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so they didn't ask him, like, they didn't really understand, like, what life is all about, like, how, what it means to actually put God first, they didn't really get it, like, if you do get it, if you do get it, if you do get it, your life is not going to be, like, it's, it's not even going to be your own, like, is you just, like, there's just a way, you, there's a way you're going to start to act that would be very strange to other people, but, yeah, but they didn't really get it. Like they were so involved with like the politics of things. You see that they were very engaging with like the king. So much like, you know, drama happening. And you know, when a place is like very um charged with like, you know, drama and like politics, you really are playing the chess, you know, the chess of of the of, of life. You know, the people seem to actually think that life is a game, which is like the trust me, like reading the books, right? Um, of this of the very one percent you receive that they really think that life is some sort of like chess like you know the game of politics right to get my money and to get more land and wealth and everything you know um so some people actually do think that you know life is a game and so when you're in that type of environment like you don't really have time to actually slow down to be like okay um yeah god what are you saying right you're just like this person did this that person did that based on my calculations, like, this is what they will possibly be doing, and so I will be doing that, so it's like, yeah, that is not how to live life at all, not at all, um, and so, like, you know, they have made princes, and I know, I knew it not, of their silver, and their gold, and, you know, I've made, have they made them idols that they may be cut off, right, they made those things, right, um, to serve their and they did many treacherous things and says how long is it is it be uh, will it be here they sorry how long will it be here they attain to innocency like how long will it be for them to actually you know turn to righteousness um, my anger is kindled against them it says for, verse six for from israel was it also the workman made it right the Israel also, Samaria did the a molten image. Israel also actually, you know, employed this workman that actually made the molten image for them themselves. He said, therefore, it is not God, but the calf of Samaria. So they made the same exact calf, the same God with the servant shall be broken. But the calf of Samaria, actually, no, we said that the, the uh, workman made it, therefore it is not God. Okay, and we also see like in the first part of 6, it says, for from Israel was it also. So yeah, the same molten image also was also in um Israel as well. It says from for from Israel was it also. The workman made it, the same workman made it. Therefore, it is not God, but the calf, right? The calf in Israel is the calf of Samaria, and it shall be broken in pieces, for they have sown in wind, and they shall reap the wild wind, and it hath no stock. The bird shall yield no male. If so be its yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. You see, and I feel like, you know, you, you maybe this is like your first time seeing the word Gentiles in the Old Testament because like really like it's literally talking about, you know, the New Testament, like what's going to happen in the New Testament, you know? Um, and so, yeah, that's just a confirmation. It says for they, they've sown wind and so they're going to reap well wind. Like, you know, wind is good, but like, why would you want, whatever you sow, you will reap. Let's just put that as that. Like, 
and that's what I that's the that's the same principle that I was given as well like even though you sin against you know the against God Jesus Christ forgives you yes you are saved but then doesn't mean that you will not reap what you sown right the consequences of sin is death all right okay <laughs> All right, um, you will get salvation. Yeah, you will be saved, but you will still suffer the consequences therein. Um, all right, um, it says it's hath no stock, the bud shall yield no meal. Um if it's so if so be its yield, the stranger shall swallow it up. Right? That's the that's what they're gonna basically you know, reap. That's what they're sowing. That's what they're showing, like very unresourceful, you know, bad strategy, bad decision making. Why would you want to like, you know, sow something that is literally not going to bring any forth fruit, right? And says even like after you're done doing all of your weird agriculture, like at the end of the day, like just like the Gentiles will come and they will swallow it up. And that is very, very interesting. Like the Gentiles shall swallow it up. Isn't that just really interesting? I feel like, I know like this Bible study might be very lengthy and just, just hear me out, okay? This is really interesting, okay? If you look at the story of like the Jewish people, like they were the ones that actually like sowed the, the seed of salvation. Jesus Christ came from, you know, the Jewish race, okay? And yeah it just had to be and and they 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 sowed the seed of salvation but at the end of the day like it says it had it hath no stock the bud shall yield no meal if so be its yield right and the strangers shall swallow it up that is so symbolic it's very symbolic the bud shall yield no meal if so, be its yield. It had no stock. I don't know if anybody has studied um agriculture, but look about think about the way Jesus Christ actually died. Right? He says the strangers shall swallow it up. That is very interesting. It says Israel is swallowed up. Now shall they be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure. It shall be among the Gentiles as a vessel wherein there is no pleasure. They are. They are actually even now in the present moment. Like, yeah. I have a very um, small Jewish community very close to where I live. Um, it says Israel is swallowed up. They have ripped, they, they sowed something, but they didn't actually rip what they had sown. And at the end of the day, when he actually sprouted, right, like the strangers swallowed it up. That is very symbolic, right? I feel like the old, that's the, that's a part of the truth, right? If you're looking at it, it's very symbolic. It's very, very symbolic of really what's happened, like what's, like the Jew, the Jewish people actually sowed the seed of, of salvation and everything, but still they did not actually believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. And we see that the Gentiles actually are the ones that are benefiting from the the that which was sown, right? And brought out of, you know, Israel, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Right? But that's just like a this this um symbolicism of um you know of this the fact in verse seven is just a very it's a it's a part of the, it's a fracture of what is being said in the new testament and it says um verse nine for they are gone up to assyria a wild ass alone by himself ephraim as i had lovers so now they, they're going to their enemies um a wild ass alone by himself a lone wolf, a wild ass, a wild ass, you know, they are very, you don't have any help. 
they are very adaptive uh, is it adaptative adaptative um very um they can be innovative i feel like i'm looking at it from a very positive point of view um but they are not plenty like they're very like they're, they're queued off like for someone if someone is walking in the desert just think about it like when someone is walking in the desert because that's the state they're in right they're walking in the desert you're trying and using all of your survival skills um and they say you you entered into the desert with like 400 people coming out of it it's like you have only like 150 people right so they're walking going to what's Assyria to the enemies Ephraim himself has had lovers right lovers in terms of like you know um nations forming alliances you know just like the story of um Poland that I shared with you guys um so they can gain some type of some type of defense you know and and support financial um you know support yea though verse 11 uh, verse 10 yea though yea <laughs> excuse me guys, yet though they have hired among the nations, now will I gather them and they shall soar a little for the burden of, they shall sorrow a little for the burden of the king of princes, right? So now God is basically just like retaliating, right? Like what's going on, right? Like what's, and I feel like this is really interesting. Like, wow, the Holy Spirit just kind of gave me an insight as well. I feel like I want to go to Oza chapter seven and just see. Um, this king, right? This king is really interesting. Um, let me know if you see. This is Oza chapter. Oh, we do we're doing nine instead of seven. I'm like, wait, what? Actually, seven. Um, the king was glad with their wickedness and the princes with their lies. Right. Um, okay, let's do eight. So now God is really going to um, deal with them, right? It says, though they have had many, um, had among the nations, now will I gather them. I will gather them and they shall sorrow a little, travail, suffer for the burden. Why? For the burden of the king. Of princes, we talked about their responsibility to preserve their king, right? To preserve their king, to make sure that he was supported, to make sure that he was well equipped to do his job. But instead, they were actually bad influencers and they used their words very wrongly against him. And I feel like it's really interesting how, like, God that's why I actually got to go back, like. First of all, like, who is the king? But then I got inside about that. But the question, the second question is that, you know, what is, why would God want to actually like, you know, sort of avenge or, yeah, sort of avenge the king, right? Um, You see that God actually has some sort of like, you know, reverence for him. At the end of the day, God is a just God and he, he will, you know, always ensure that he's actually justified, not for them, not for the king, but because he's a just God, right? Um, and it says, because Ephraim hath made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him to sin, right? You know, sometimes when like we're doing something bad, like you, you're you thinking that God is not saying anything. And I feel like oftentimes, like when I'm taking to indecision, I just kind of like look and just, you know, just kind of soak in his presence just a little bit. Cause like, I'm like, Lord, like even if like I'm making a very bad decision right now, like, it's like I see like <laughs> like I, yeah like I feel like it's me that would know later that okay like I should have just waited a little bit to kind of get more confirmation about what he's saying or you know sometimes you actually do feel it like you and that's that's the worst that's the worst confirmation that you don't want to 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 feel like I see like that God has left you that's something that you don't want to that's something that you don't want to experience but like just to just to have God just being quiet and just like watching you, like just taking certain moves. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm like, okay, yeah, but God, what are you saying? And you're trying to like, based on what you know about him, like how would God feel about what I'm doing? And does he actually please him, right? If your life is like that, like 
then you know you're doing something right, <laughs> you know, because you're putting God first, right? And it says, um, yeah, um, it says, because Ephraim has made many altars to sin, altars shall be unto him, altars shall be unto him to sin, right? So let him do what he wants to do. He wants to go ahead and do whatever, sure. Right? It might seem like as if God is not looking and seeing all of the, you know, wicked things happening, the evil things happening in the world right now. It's like, leave them, like, let them do what they want to do. Like, it's just a matter of time, you know? And I wanted to talk about things, and I feel like I, I can be open here on this um page. Genesis chapter two, um, yeah. One and two, basically, talks about, you know, the, the how the heaven and the earth was, was created. Um, and I want to talk about this in depth with scripture. Maybe we should just keep that for now. But what I wanted to point out was that even the Bible talks about we don't really know when, you know, the trumpet is going to sound. But in fact, God has actually placed the time, the timing of like the beginning of a creature, a creature or like a, a beast or living things, flying things right the creatures right yes puts the time of you know um the the beginning like the, the first species down to like the very last um until its extinction the time the time like the the like the in biology there's they call it um uh half-life or is it half-life they call it but i feel like they, they kind of like when you're reading when you're doing biology which is like something that i'm like i wish i kind of you know, paid more attention, but it's, when you really you get more insight about the minds of certain people that have kind of looked and kind of are understanding certain things, because it's the Holy Spirit that's now revealing certain things to me, you know, having gone through all of this scientific uh, literature. Um, but yeah, everything, like everything that we need, for, that it created has the potential to, you know, become what he wants it to be every creature has the potential to evolve but there is a time that every one of the creatures of the creation of god will eventually go extinct and this is very natural um it's very natural it's very normal um that's just like in genesis it, it proves this and yeah i want to actually share more scripture regarding that I will, but this is going to be a very separate teaching, right? About really who God is. Um, now there's a question that I'm really wanting to answer. Now I feel like my Bible, no, I feel like I feel like, I say I feel like a lot, but in my Bible study, the Holy Spirit has really been giving me Bible study assignments. Okay, and it's just really about me meditating, right? Meditating on the Word of the Lord and kind of trying to grasp what God is saying and let him actually speak to me so it's very important to actually meditate meditate on the word of the lord um if you are it, it, someone that has the gift of prophecy or like teaching um this is what you know those people is saying in the season like just meditate on the word of the lord more so that you can get more insight on what the word of the lord is saying um so that's basically like what i'm i'm studying right now um but specifically the question i'm not going to share um because I don't want to just put it out in the in the spiritual space like that. Because I don't know. I don't want people whispering in my ear. Like, bro, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah. And um, that being said, like, there is a time for the entire, you know, creatures to actually go extinct. Um, and... And I, I I believe that God, I know that God knows. I don't believe, I know. I believe, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm confident that God knows exactly when is the time. Like when when is the, when it's the time, he knows. And, you know, everything is just going to come together and it's just going to be, you know how God does this thing? Like when, you know, certain things, like you might be that person that certain experiences, certain events in your life just actually happens. And you're like, why did this happen? Like, when I was young, I experienced this, like, what is going on? And then like, one day, everything just kind of comes together and you're like, what? Like, are you 
serious like this is really what's been going on and this is really who I am now I kind of understand like my life story you know like in those movies as well they do that as well bits and pieces of somebody's life come together and it's like oh okay like now I get it like you know yeah that's how it's gonna be like and yeah um okay let's just continue so now that we've kind of understood that okay <laughs> just to let you know bringing you back into like revelations and really you know god bringing you back to god and bringing you back to really what's you know what's going to happen and this is really fact so yeah um okay and it says um you know they've gotten all of these defenses right it says now i will gather them and now they will now sorrowly too for the burden of the king of princes talk, we talked about how god is a just god because ephraim hath made many altars to sin right altars shall be unto him to sin i have written to him the great things of my law but they were counted as a strange thing isn't that just interesting like god has literally given them his commandments to follow but they're like what is this strange thing like <laughs> isn't that just interesting like in the book of judges just talked about which reminds me talked about how the children of israel had no idea like what the commandment what the book of the law actually like was saying like they had like a just like a bit of like maybe your grandma is kind of telling you like oh you know the god that we served uh is it doesn't really like that you will not wash your hands when you actually eat them it's just a little bit of like tradition that they actually teach them but not really the word like do not actually you know be with molten images to worship and stuff like that when they had learned the word when joshua had explained the word to them i think it was the book of was it judges no it was nehemiah oh it was nehemiah was it, it wasn't Josh, uh, joshua that actually told them it was nehemiah nehemiah the priest that shared the word to them and um yeah after Nehemiah and his old team had you know told them everything they were so like you know guilty they were repentant and stuff but this one's like I feel like it's very interesting like they actually like they he said he wrote the word to them but they counted it as a strange thing like so they understood it they they heard it but they were like a strange thing could it have been that maybe they did not understand what's you know what's been said because even in the book of Nehemiah it talked about how the children of Israel did not really understand the word of the Lord like they did not get it like it was just too complicated very wordy and stuff like that it was just and then like you know um, Nehemiah and his team basically the priests they were now explaining it and it really took their time to break it down to them like <laughs> for them to actually get it ah they take the time to break it down to them for them to be you know participants of this holy communion with the father and to be part of the altar of the lord right um i feel like this issue might be just you know a issue with you know lack of good leadership right when the leader is effective and good and knows the word it's it's very easy for him to actually impact the rest of the people right but if the leader is very idolatrous and doing all sorts of wicked things then the other people that are following the leader will eventually imitate him right um so i, I strongly believe that this is the case here um and it says they sacrifice flesh for the sacrifices of mine offering and eat it so in this case like there are still doing like their tradition they're doing what they ought to do just like the people of um uh israel right even back then right even though the temple of the tabernacle of the lord was actually quite destroyed to the point um but yeah they were actually doing it and like they would eat it them eating the sacrifice to begin with was them proclaiming that they were some part of the altar even though they were actually defiling themselves so first of all god is god rejecting their altar is god telling them that i have rejected you you are not mine you are the your gods okay you're not mine you are the one you're the you're for the gods okay you're your little gods your molten gods that cannot talk here 
it's nothing, right? Now will he hear their iniquity and visit their sins, they shall return to Egypt. So God has basically like just given them a verdict. Like God basically told them what's going to happen, right? In the very far future and bringing them back to their current states, right? Um, Hey, like, this is what's gonna, this is what's happening. Like, yes, like they will eventually will suffer all of this transgression, Israel. Um, this is what Samaria is doing, right? Um, Israel too is doing idolatry. Samaria is also doing idolatry, worshiping the calf image, right? Um, Israel, you know, this is what they're doing. Um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of persecution and it comes down to say like, well, this is what they're doing. And so therefore, like you, you see, they're going to return to Egypt, right? They return to Egypt. And here it talks about how um, Israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the, the Gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure, right? Um, they're going to be very, they'll be mixed with other people. Verse eight, I'm bringing it down to verse 13. They shall return to Egypt. So they, they shall return to, Ephraim shall return to Egypt, right? Um, verse 14 says, for Israel hath forgotten his maker and buildeth temples, and Judah has multiplied fenced cities, right? But I will send a fire upon the cities and it shall devour the places thereof. You see, um, I believe it was um, it's um, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 27, right? That just really talks about how everything is going to just continue to overturn, right? I like to just go back to that. Because it's the same thing, like, it's the same thing that's just happened. He said, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. It shall be no more until he come who's right. It says, right, this is literally like he who, that's what we talked about in Isaiah chapter 8. Who, he, he said he, this he, he shall come, right? He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord. There is referring to that same he, Jesus Christ. He shall come as an eagle against the house of the Lord, because they have transgressed against my covenant and trespassed against my law, right? This is what's basically happening. And it's just going to continue to overturn. This verdict is going to overturn and overturn and overturn until the one who owns it will come, right? Jesus Christ. And so it's the same thing. Um, and speaking specifically to churches that are really not, they don't like, you know, it's like you you have the word and your pastor and many pastors now, I don't know. They have actually just said, you know what, we're not working, um, doing pastoring for full time. Um, I mean, me I personally I don't think that is something that you should be doing. I think you should definitely have something you should be doing on the side, even if it's like an entrepreneurship type of thing, or like just something you should have going for yourself, like Paul did have something like if Paul was doing so much more, but then he was still even working with his hands. Like it was on, it was going on missionary trips. There was times where like, like it was going through a lot. Like, you know what I mean? And um, it, Paul was still that man. So I just feel like there's just a lot of politics in the church today that should never be right. Um, And oftentimes it stems from like, you know, pastors being overly dependent on the congregation for, food which is like even paul said it that it should be that way but because the way the world is technically logically it should be that way but because the way the world is and the world is not perfect it's not it's not an utopian world right and you know in in everything we have to make certain decisions with brain you know like make it with thinking about like you know um recent events or events that has historical events that has happened in the past and have using those you know little factors to determine if like certain decisions would actually benefit you for your own church right and so just just to curb you know um certain events happening in the, in the future where like you know you then start to make little compromises just because of your worried about what you're going to eat just to impress certain people that are feeding you right that is something that you don't want you know um independence is really important like it's really really important especially if you're a pastor like you're and you're an advocate like 
it pays for you to actually have your own you know um stream of income like even if it's just like a little bit something that would just like you know like be that that'll be sufficient for you and your, your family right um yeah i just wanted to say that um but yeah we see this happening over and over again like when when we when i read this bible study like i was very much projecting onto like you know the israelites and this day and age ephraim we don't know you know um what country ephraim is does it even really still exist but then we know that the people are definitely like probably mixed with like saying they're just probably like just scattered right and then maybe the land is converted into something else right we don't we don't really know sp the specifics but this places still do exist like this land still do exist um samaria right and um it's always going to overturn overturn and overturn and overturn until jesus comes and you know even paul says it like there's there's some jews that will that I receive and to this present day that i have received christ and will receive christ to be their person lord and savior and those ones will be saved but there are some that will not receive christ to be their person lord and savior and so when the trumpet comes when blows the eagle will be against the house of the lord right and those ones that have transgressed against the covenant covenant of the lord right the covenant of the lord the commandment of the lord right will cry because the enemy shall pursue them and they shall be cast off uh, they shall they shall know the enemy shall pursue them and basically you know you know what happens right you know what happens just because they cast off the the one that is is good jesus christ rejected him um again like when you are doing something that's evil you know it's evil but you're doing it anyways because of you you don't have any you know because you're weak okay um one because even paul says it like and that that also the chapter is also controversial um <laughs> about that part where it talks about idol food ah uh, okay so yeah um just know that it's about your relationship with Jesus Christ at the end of the day. He's the one that died for you. He's the one that's taking, you know, the blame for everything that you're doing. And yeah. So um, think about it. Every time. Think about it. Study the word again about, you know, your salvation and your righteousness. And how does that really work? How does it really work? Really? How does it work? Hmm? And I've, I've done like a, 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 a video on that saying that, you know, I gave you guys references on that as well. But every time that you sin. You know, you're actually hurting Jesus Christ because of we're in him. The whole world is in him and we're by him. So every time we sin, he experiences the wrath of the Lord. And it's, it wasn't something that was like, yes, like um, he experienced it, right? It was beaten, bruised and broken, right? That happened. But then it's like, it's still happening. It's still continual thing. It's a continual thing happening. Like, right like the pain of the world we feel, we feel it the wrath of god we feel it right if it was that we wouldn't experience the wrath of god again then i guess like christians we will basically <laughs> who we'll be living in like some sort of island but the, another scripture that i had given in that um um video was jesus christ saying that his burden is light right and is um i gave that i gave that scripture as well and it's you see the enemy also understands this principle right that even him also because he's been cursed he's been defeated also is experiencing his own wrath because like at this point like, <laughs> he's experiencing his own so he also shares it 
to his children. Like if you've watched the testimonies of people, it's an ongoing thing. Like the kingdom of God is alive. It's an ongoing thing, right? Like they talk about how the, the devil actually shares burdens, like it shares diseases and it shares sicknesses to people, satanic agents. People that have that sacrifice to the God of Baal, they, they say like, well, the, the because of what they've, you know, affiliated themselves with or, or um, the allegiances they've, they've made, they now have like big sores on their back and like they have to get someone to be robbing it. Just, and then the more they, they the sword decays, the more they have wealth or something like that. It's like that type of covenant that they actually have, but it's like the enemy that's actually sharing his own burden. But the burden in Christ Jesus is, you know, sometimes we will go through trials and tribulation, right? Yes, we will. But imagine the amount of pain, the amount of like, the, the, just the amount of like pain. That's all I can say. That it took, that is taken, even presently, that is taken for us. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if you've ever gotten your heart broken before, right? Or like, or rejected before. How would you feel? Jesus Christ is alive. The people that he died for reject him every single day. And he loves them. That is pain. Okay. And when we sin, he's the one that takes the blame. It's an ongoing thing. The Bible talks about we are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Do you know what that means? That out of the people in this world, right? Say like all of the people in this world are causing, you know, or no, 70% of the people in this world are causing Jesus Christ pain because they're inside of him. They're like some sort of um, virus, right? Because they're causing him pain. And it's the body right? We're in the body of Christ. It says there are some people, the children, the, the called, the ones that have been saved, the are is righteousness. They are the ones that bring in joy. Just like Paul expresses about how he goes to all of these places and, you know, he experiences, he experiences the worst in temptation, just the worst. And he writes to the church in Corinth, about just how, you know, it's just, they are really, is joy. Like hearing, you know, from Titus, just how it talks about how the church really feels about him, how they worry for him, they mourn for him, you know, they pray for him and all of these things. That's what really gives him joy. And so we might think that Jesus Christ is, you know, in, in the right hand of the most high God, but in fact, like, is there just like the way we are in the presence of the Lord when we are in the presence of the Lord he is in the presence of the Lord we experience joy we experience you know pleasure when we feel you know pain when we're suffering it's not like a sieve we're suffering it's like a sieve like we're just going through it and it's just there's hope all right that is the same way Jesus Christ actually feels because he shares the spirit with us right he gave us the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. That is a connection to him. We are connected to him. And so I feel like we need, that's the relationship that we, we have to understand. When you're thinking about the relationship with God, Jesus Christ, that is really what we have. We're sharing his burden, right? And so, yeah, the work, he said it is finished. You know, he has finished his own race. It is finished. He has finished his own race, okay? And Paul talk, even talks about it, that we also need to run our own race as well. We need to run our own race and we, we need to run it well, right? And Jesus Christ as is looking down, you know, and is like, or oh, he's even here, he's present here, you know, it's in the spirit and he's saying is is connected to us, right? And he's not leaving us. 
you know he's not leaving us he's not going to forsake us and he knows like how hard you know it is in this world sin the law the devil and everything he knows he understands and so and he wants to he is making the tax less burdensome and all we just need to do is trust in him and when we feel the pain don't run from it feel the pain from a point a perspective that wow like i you know you have the opportunity to actually like you know share in this burden right and it just gives you a sense of purpose like you know and know that it's not always gonna be like this like there are you know pockets of like amazing moments in between you know and paul even says that you know when he abounds in in i i just remember the the, the scripture like you know he's always he's always content even though in the moments where he abounds in you know in many things like in goodness and <laughs> in like the finer things in life and like when he's like suffering either way like he's content whether in the good times or the bad time is content and that's why i i'm making this lifestyle um content just saying that when times are good enjoy it and be happy laugh and be present because there's gonna be a time where like it's not so great and um yeah like it's just life and you just get through it without complaining without murmuring and just give thanks to the lord because you're able to share out of his own burden i guess like what have we learned from this bible study you know, I personally have just learned that, you know, just to continue to be faithful to the Lord and really not idolize, you know, not be ignorant, right? Not like to not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy, um, not to be ignorant of the word of the Lord um, and just being aware of our relationship with the lord right it's not always like you know i'm saying this again it's not always like this tough you know it's not always tough all the time okay like if you're dating someone and or you're in a relationship with someone and it's always hard or time I, I was going on <laughs> like you're like what's happening like like you know like the person doesn't have money or you know it's like it's hard like or like you're you're in a relationship with someone and the man is physically violent because of his mental illness right it's like wow like i can't like you just tap out you know but god is very compassionate god is not a man like it's not it's not like that you know god is is breeze with him and it's just super amazing like he's the perfect partner that you could ever ever need okay very very perfect perfect okay and so it's an it's a it's an honor to love him it's an honor to be by him and in him it's an honor to be the righteousness of christ jesus it's an honor and i feel like if i'm gonna give you an assignment i want you to meditate on what it is to actually be the righteousness of christ jesus name the, the fact that if you know you're in the body of christ as an antibody like you're actually helping to purge people by preaching the word of the lord to them that they will become whole and also join the group of healers you know healing the body of christ all right guys that is basically it for the bible study today um yeah this is i guess like this is like an encouragement um bible study right to encourage you all and to um, remind you of like the coming of christ jesus that he is coming you know he's coming he is coming hallelujah Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your love, for your kindness. Thank you, Father, for your reminder of, like, your coming. And we are waiting in excitement and in just, like, we're excited. We are hopeful. We are grateful for everything that we are, we have managed to accomplish as Christians um, in, in this earth. And everything that we're doing up. Uh, everything our existence is doing in the body of christ i give you all the glory O oh lord for even the church i thank you for 
how every like everything is transpiring i thank you father for just your marvelous goodness your grace your you continue to just do just amazing things and for where we are at right now i want to say lord you are just doing so much so like you're doing a great job and we're so grateful that we have a good leader a good god a good lord mighty in battle great and strong and powerful like you an ego but i give you all the glory O lord in the name of the lord jesus thank you father for we know that you're waiting and we're also waiting and we know that for a short while you know whether short or long uh, the time will come that you the trumpet will blow and then you will come and we'll all just go to the new jerusalem and everything will finally be settled and we will all be able to just rest truly rest and father i give you all the glory O lord in jesus name as the hustle and bustle continues we i pray that we are strengthened we're strengthened in the spirit and in our bodies to continue to do the work of the lord and to over to to, to stomp on every device of the enemy stomp on serpents and scorpions in jesus name heavenly father i glorify your name O oh god for you reign supreme i thank you lord jesus for you are awesome 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 you are and there is no other god like you every other god is a counterfeit and they deserve to to wreck in the lake of fire thank you heavenly father may your name be highly exalted O oh lord for yes lord whatever fear that any one of us have right now because of maybe any situation that's going on in our lives because of people in our lives that are boasting or or or, or they have posed them posed themselves to be terrors of death but i decree and declare oh god a revival oh god a revival oh god in the name of the lord jesus in our spirit to stand oh god against any yoke of the enemy any representative of the enemy any agent of the enemy in the name of the lord jesus just like samson stood against the philistines just like david stood against goliath we stand against our enemies in the name of the lord jesus we are strong and mighty by faith in the name of the lord jesus Abba Father, I glorify your name, O God, in Jesus' name. Father, be thou exalted, O Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Spirit inside of us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. May your name be highly exalted, O Lord. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching today's Bible study. Again, my name is Ayoko Fushola. If you want to go ahead and subscribe, comment, like, please excuse me, please go ahead and do that. Um, we're going to be doing another Bible study on Wednesday and hopefully we'll be done with Uza and we can get into something else. But I will probably be talking about Genesis um, in maybe in the next, um, maybe in, in, in the subsequent days. Um, I don't know when exactly, um, but like uh, there's a high percentage that's gonna be before next week Wednesday, probably tomorrow. We'll see. I'm not promising tomorrow, guys. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye, guys. I love you with the love of Christ. Bye, guys.